Look how good that looks, are you kidding me? So simple. One of the most common misconceptions when it comes to cooking is that more equals better. We're talking more flavor or more ingredients in a dish is somehow gonna equal a better final product, which is just not true. If I've learned anything over my many years of home cooking, it's that more does not equal better. And today I am going to showcase that concept. I'm bringing you three meals that all come together with just five ingredients each. But with these restrictions comes great response. Responsibility. We've got to bring the skill, we've got to bring the creativity, but most importantly, we have to trust that we can whip up some delicious meals for the week with just five ingredients each. So if you're ever feeling stuck in the kitchen, you're lacking inspiration on what to cook, just try to tune into your hunter-gatherer roots. We all have it in us, deep in our biology. <laughs> and what would they do? Well, they would just go out and pick or harvest or hunt what's in season, what's around. Whether that's at your local farmer's market or even the grocery store, you can find seasonal items. Today, I'm getting inspiration from the garden because we are in full kind of late spring, early summer harvest. And we're gonna start over in this in-ground bed because I have some beautiful lettuce over here that needs to go. Here's a few varieties of some butter lettuce, probably my favorite lettuce because it's delicious, but it's also pretty mild and also makes incredible lettuce cups, which will come into play later. And over here is what I believe is called sprouting broccoli. It sprouts up and you just kind of break it off and it keeps creating these little shoots. So the harvests come early, but they also just keep coming for weeks as you just break them off. And over here, I've showed you this a few times. This is my garlic patch. And we're about a month, a month and a half from really doing like a proper garlic harvest. But I just continue to harvest this spring or what they call green garlic, which is just young garlic. You can see here, the heads are really starting to develop as it gets warm. Warmer. So I can now use this just like a normal head of garlic. Over here, I have a bunch of onions growing. Just like the garlic, as it gets warmer, the heads are starting to get bigger. But I've just been harvesting these spring onions, which are great as I need them throughout the season. We'll head over to the raised beds now for just two more things. First in this cold frame, I've got a few things growing in here, but I'm after this big ass fennel, which is my favorite aromatic to use. We're gonna cook that up in a pasta. And then finally over here, I have some beautiful Beautiful kale. So I'll just collect a little bouquet of that. And I'll head inside, I'll process all of this, meaning clean off all the bugs and dirt, and we'll get into these recipes. Now, one of my most popular recipes of all time on the channel is chicken teriyaki, which makes sense because chicken teriyaki is the best. Now, what I am about to show you is a simplified five ingredient version of that that is still incredibly delicious, but comes together much faster. So right here, I have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and these were actually bone in, skin on, which I took off both of those things and placed them in the air fryer and air fried them for 15 minutes on 350 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. And now we have this crispy chicken skin, which I like having as a separate entity in this dish because we're gonna cook the actual chicken in sauce, which would make the skin soggy. So we can actually garnish with this later on. And for the chicken thighs, I'm just gonna season them with salt and pepper on both sides. And you can go a little bit lighter on the salt because this dish does have a good bit of soy sauce in it. And if you do plan this ahead of time, throwing these in the fridge for like 12 or even 24 hours max is gonna give you an incredible final product but even if you just have 15, 30 minutes, just let them sit out at room temperature and let that salt do a little bit of work. Here is the rendered fat that came off that chicken skin. I will just dump that right in to this preheated pan. So we're cooking this chicken in its own fat, which is ideal. But of course, if you don't have the rendered fat, just use any of your standard oils. So these have been sitting out for just 30 minutes. There's a little bit of moisture that's being pulled from the salt. So I will just pat that off and we will get these frying up in the pan. Turn that up a little bit. Two, three, and I'll just get the splatter guard on that. And really the last main prep for this dish is chopping garlic. And if you've never seen young spring garlic, pretty cool. It looks like what you're used to, just more underdeveloped, but you can still, whoa, oops. You can pop out these individual clothes, which I'm gonna do now. Look at that. That's so neat. And I'll just give this a rough chop. And most of you, of course, are gonna be using regular garlic. The only difference with this is the younger garlic is a little more subtle. The flavor hasn't intensified yet. So I'm gonna use an entire bulb here. Whereas for you, a few cloves of garlic will get the job done. Boom. It can be 
pretty rough like that. Now for the broccoli, depending on what type of broccoli you're using, the goal is just manageable size pieces. So just cutting off these tops, I can give them a rip and then chopping some of these stems down a little bit. And that should do the job. Let's check in on this chicken. Where are we at? Ah, not bad. Needs about another minute. And we can undercook it slightly because again, it's going to cook in the sauce later on. All right, let's say, okay. Perfect. I'll just cook this for about two minutes on this side. All right, chicken coming off. Just onto a little plate here. Looking good. Now we've got a lot of residual goodness in there. Never, you know this by now, never get rid of that. We're going right in to that. Whoa! Some excess water on that broccoli. And what I love about this sprouting broccoli, you can just kind of stir fry it pretty quickly. And we'll just cook this for maybe a minute, two minutes, until it has some nice color. All right, so that's done. Nice and crispy. We'll pop that right onto the chicken plate and we'll turn things down a lot. We don't want to burn any garlic. I think I've got a little bit more of this fat. Just a little bit. Is that enough? We'll add a little additional. All right, now this happens very fast. So be prepared with your ingredients, which is just soy sauce, honey, and garlic. Just keep moving that garlic around till it's nice and fragrant and a little bit soft. And then I'm gonna go in with a quarter cup of soy and just under a quarter cup of honey. This is your sweet and your glaziness. And just give that a stir. And since these are a little undercooked, I'm gonna throw in my chicken thighs, along with any juices that came off the chicken. And on a medium heat, we'll just let that reduce and get nice and sticky. To plate this up, really simple. Got some leftover rice I just threw in the microwave. Just get a little bit of that on the plate. Got some broccoli in there. And then look at these glazed up soy garlic chicken thighs. And then of course, look at this sauce. Garlic, soy, honey. That's all you need. Oh my God, I almost forgot. Crispy skin. Again, the isolation here. So you preserve that skin. When you're working with only a few ingredients, you gotta get crafty. Actually, speaking of crafty, this is a bit of a cheat code. You can use the garlic ends as scallions, pretty much. So I'm just taking this dish to the next level. A few of those. Now we're talking. Look at that. Oh my God. Salty, sweet, definitely reminder, under season that chicken. That sauce is packing a salty punch. Most of you, I'm guessing, will have garlic, honey, and soy sauce in their pantry at all times. So this is a perfect dish to rely on if you don't have extensive ingredients to really build out a fancy sauce. So before I get into the next recipe, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is Viator. And with over 300,000 travel experiences, it's the premier place on the internet to book your next epic experience. And what I love about Viator is that at its core, it's just a great search engine for finding a new experience. So for me, I've got two little kids and I wanted to book something fun with my wife, but it needed to be close. It needed to be somewhat local. So when I was searching for things to do on Long Island, I actually found a guided country wine and farm bike tour, which is right up my alley. And with Viator's detailed descriptions and real travel reviews, it was kind of a no brainer to book this bike tour. And this excursion totally blew me away. The North Fork is just a hub for agricultural tourism. We visited a few vineyards, a bunch of farm stands and sampled some great local food and really just got to take in some amazing scenery via a nice calm bike ride around the North Fork. And booking is an absolute breeze with payment options, 24 seven service and free cancellations, which is great when you are trying something new. So maybe you've got a trip coming up sometime soon and you're looking to build out your itinerary or you're like me and you're just looking to do something locally that's fun. Whatever it is, head over to Viator.com to book your next travel experience. You will not regret it. So up next, I am making pasta because pasta is simple, which is why it is the best weeknight dinner. And this one is inspired by a very special guest. <laughs> the jamon. Oh, look at this thing. I've kind of made a dent. But before I carve this up, I will just preheat some water for blanching the kale and boiling the pasta. And then I'll get this pan right here, which is a nice wide saute pan with a high lip, my favorite for making pasta. I'll let this heat up on a medium heat. So as you can see by the looks of it, I am no uh, jamon carving expert, but honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Just any thickness is gonna be 
Good. Some nice fat to meat ratio. And this was 199 bucks on Amazon. One of the cheapest ones you can get. It's pretty damn good, I will say. And it is lasting me a while. Like a great investment versus spending $20 on a little packet of prosciutto from the market. It's really been fun to have. I'm just gonna keep slicing this up into little chunks and I'll get it frying off. That was pretty thin there. That's almost see-through hummus. All right, well, one more piece. That should do it. And we'll take the hummus out of scene. <laughs> now the pan is is preheated. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of olive oil to get things started. And of course you can use pancetta, you can use prosciutto. Any cured meat with a decent bit of fat is gonna give you a lot of flavor. Now while that is rendering, I'm just gonna take this handful of kale, pop it right into here to blanch, which will only take probably 30 seconds to 45 seconds. You can see it goes bright green right away and that's done. You wanna preserve that freshness. Just get that in a bowl, in cold water, and just let that sit. And then once this greenish water is back up to 10, I'm gonna go in with my pasta, which are these bigger elbows. It says about nine minutes. I'm using about 12 of the 16 ounces. Hit it with a little bit of salt. And we're off to the races. We just wanna keep moving that around so we get a nice even crisp and keep it on a nice low heat. We don't wanna burn this ham. And the final prep is just cutting up this fennel. If you don't have fennel, if you don't like fennel, I would first say try just caramelizing it in some oil. You'll become a fan. But you could totally replace this with some onion, some garlic. It's all gonna work in this, but the fennel will just give it a more unique, distinct taste than you might be used to in a pasta. Slice off the end, cut that in half, slice down there. You just slice it up just like an onion. Thin slices. So that is perfect. There's a fine line. You definitely don't want to overcook it. Just nice and rendered and crispy. We'll get that out. Looks like we need just a little bit more fat in with our fennel. Oh yeah. Little bit of salt, little bit of pepper. And as you can see, in a short period of time, we've already built some good flavor on that fennel. So I've got a bottle of white wine and boom. I would say that's about one cup's worth, which will reduce down by at least half to really cook off that alcohol. I'm just gonna give this little sauce a taste. Yum, yum, yum. All right, already reduced pasta. Let's just try one shell to make sure. Perfect. Right on time. And this is still liquid. It's not gonna be thick, but once we add the starchy pasta, everything's gonna come together. I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is feeling a little bit lackluster. And that's because we need to add all of these greens. So I'll just take these and squeeze them out. And they're already cooked. So I'll just give them a quick slicey dicey. Get that in there. Look how good that looks. Get that in there. Is that really five ingredients? It feels like more. So insane. And now we have one main goal. Take all of this liquid, this wine sauce, and just cook it in with that pasta until it fully absorbs and gets nice and saucy. Which is already happening in a matter of 30 seconds. All right, I'm flying in a major cheat code. This is some pecorino, which is optional, depending on how you look at it. Kind of essential right now. So that's six ingredients. I have failed! And we'll just work that in and we'll serve it up. Oh, yes. Wow. I guarantee if you go to Italy, at the core of every good pasta is gonna be five to seven ingredients. Italian food is simple, it should be simple, but it's how you craft and care for those ingredients. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. This tastes so similar to one of my favorite pastas of all time, which is a broccoli robin sausage orchetti. The kale and the hamon are doing a very similar job, and I love the combo there. I didn't expect that. That's damn good. Mm. So as you can see with the last two meals, things can get a little carb heavy from time to time. I'm eating a lot of rice, I'm eating a lot of pasta, and sometimes I'm just a little carbed out, which is when I am calling on 
the lettuce wrap. And we have this beautiful bib lettuce. I mean, look at these cups. That right there is a vessel to hold something. And what I like doing, especially with minimal ingredients, is just making a stir fry and serving it in some lettuce. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. First thing I'll do is just preheat my pan on a low heat, sharpen my knife. Now we've eaten a lot of meat, so I've got a block of tofu here to keep things vegetarian, which is filled with water. Now to get this crispy, we actually don't have to remove all the water but just soak up some of that excess water. I think this is enough. I'm gonna save this piece. And we're just gonna make little tiny cubes, just like that. Same Z's here. And then toss that into a bowl. To make it super simple, I'm just gonna spray. Got some avocado oil. Since we're air frying, the beauty is they can still be a little wet and they don't need that much oil to get crispy. And just a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. All right, so these are getting air fried. And we'll dump those in, spread them out somewhat evenly. And we're gonna go high heat, 380. We'll start at 10 minutes. And what's happening here is all this convection heat is gonna simultaneously dry out the tofu a little bit while getting it crispy from that oil coat. And it's just so much easier to cook in an air fryer than deal with, you know, flipping it in a pan and all of that nonsense. Game changer. Now we can start chopping up our ingredients to build out this stir fry. We'll wipe this board down. So here are my spring onions. I'm just gonna use the white part. We'll save this for garnish. When it comes to five ingredients, we take advantage of everything. And this is gonna be the equivalent to maybe half a medium onion or one small onion. We'll just slice right through it. Super simple. All right, so our pan is preheated. I'm just gonna add a little bit of fat to the pan and use whatever oil you have. And then I will start frying up these onions. We're working with some decent heat here, which is when I like to bring in the Splatter guard, keep things clean. And the only other thing I need to prep are these mushrooms right here. The standard creminis, you could use shiitakes or really anything you can find. These do need a little bit of a clean, it looks like. Give them a quick wipe down. And for me, the quickest way to cut a button mushroom like this, slice off just a little end piece, place it flat, rattle through. Slice, place it flat, rattle through. Now once we have some decent color here, onions are a little soft, going with the mushrooms. And don't be nervous if your mushrooms absorb up any excess oil. They first suck up all of that moisture. You can see it's, the pan is pretty dry here. Then they start releasing that moisture back into the pan, which makes it a little bit easier to stir fry. So don't get nervous and just start dumping in a ton of oil. Just be patient. And while this is stir frying, check out our tofu. Oh yeah, see, you just give it a shake. So you can see they still have some nice moisture in there, but they're getting crispy. Not recommended to try one this hot. Uh, I'm a trained home cooking professional. Mm, tastes like authentic fried tofu you get from Chinatown. So good. I am gonna give it three more minutes and it'll be perfect. So you can see these mushrooms have browned up really nice and actually, they haven't released that much moisture at all. And now that they've broken down, I feel comfortable adding just a little bit more fat. Tiny bit of salt. And here we go. I'm going right in with the crispy tofu. Now we've got our stir fry, but we need a little extra flavor. And here's my cheat code. This is just some store-bought Asian-style barbecue sauce. You can use a teriyaki sauce. You can use an American-style barbecue sauce. Just anything you want to add a little bit of glaziness, to add some of that sweet, salty kick. And we're at like the very end of this. You could use hoisin. And that wasn't much at all. But it will be just enough to give me the flavor that I'm looking for. In the first meal, I built my own sauce. And for this, I called in a little support. Oh, one more thing, almost forgot. We'll slice up these green onions, nice and thin. We'll turn off the heat, throw those in there, and I will serve up these lettuce cups. This is one of those meals that's ridiculously simple, but so realistic in my day-to-day -day life. Again, when I'm feeling I just need to lighten it up, I love a good lettuce wrap. Mm. I always love the idea in Vietnamese cuisine where they will just serve you a big thing of greens or herbs and you'll take something that's a little heavier or saltier and just wrap it up with lettuce just to lighten things up a bit. Rather than salads being the only purpose for greens, there's more versatility to it. Mm. We did it. I am satisfied. 
I'm gonna keep eating this for lunch because it's so damn good. Make sure you check out Viator.com to book your next travel experience and I'll see you in the next video.